dear students welcome back in the previous session we have discussed about um, tip to tip prehension which is one of the precision handling now in this session we are going to discuss about the another precision handling type that is pack to side prehension okay the pack to side prehension is also known as key grip or lateral pinch because a key is held between the pad and the thumb okay and also the side of the index finger and this pad to side prehension differs from other forms of uh, precision handling only in that the thumb is more adducted here thumb is adducted in the remaining type of precision handling the thumb thumb is abducted isn't it so here the thumb is more adducted and less rotated so in the previous um, types you will have more rotation of the thumb as well as abduction is observed but in this part to side the thumb is more adducted and um, less rotated okay so the activity level of the flexor pollicis brevis increases in this kind of um, precision handling and um, the opponent's pollicis action is decreased when these two muscle actions when you compare with the tip to tip prehension and also the thumb is going to adduction so the activity of the adductor pollicis also increases which uh, when compared to other forms that is tip to tip and um, pad to pad prehension okay and slight flexion of the distal phalanx of the thumb is required so what are the main actions required here is here the thumb is more adducted and less rotated and slight flexion of the distal phalanx of the thumb is required and the muscular activity if you can see in the pad to side prehension the flexor pollicis brevis action is more than that of opponent's pollicis when you compared with the other types of um, prehen that is uh, precision handling types okay and if you can see uh, such kind of prehension in um, something like turning a key so in this what will happen the wrist will again assume in neutral flexion and extension and drop into slight ulnar deviation can be seen um, in turning a key okay and to put the key in line with the forearm so that so the key should be present in the line of forearm so that the pronation or supination can be used to turn the key okay if you see pad to pad, pad to side prehension is the least precise of the forms of precision handling normally it can be actually be performed by a person with paralysis of all hand muscles so pad to side prehension can be performed um, by a person who paralyzed pa who have uh, hand muscle paralysis okay here the flexor forces needed to the mcp and ip joints which can be provided by passive tension which is created in extrinsic finger and thumb flexors as they are stretched over an extending wrist so the pad to side prehension activity can be seen in the paralyzed patient how it occurs means so if that person extends the wrist then um the passive tension which is created by the extrinsic finger and thumb flexors 
causes such kind of um, prehension so this phenomenon of hand closures during the wrist extension known as tenodesis what is that so it is called as tenodesis okay and um, such kind of uh, hand function is seen in many persons with quadriplegia okay active control of your wrist extensor muscle is necessary for useful use of tenodesis okay and back to side prehension is the finest grasp that can be accomplished without active hand musculature okay the so the same tenodesis action will produce a cylindrical power grip also if the object can be placed appropriately in the palm so release of grasp is affected by relaxing the wrist extensors and allowing gravity to flex the wrist as the wrist flexes the extensor um, so the extrinsic flexors become slack the extrinsic flexors become slack that is what are the extrinsic flexors that is fds and fdp are going to slack while the extensor digitorum and extensor pollicis longus become stretched okay the passive tension in the extensors in a dropped wrist is adequate um is enough to partially extend both mcp and ip joints so these are the some variations seen in back to side prehension which occurs in uh, paralysis of uh, a person um especially in the hand muscles but if you only mention the action then the main action is seen is here if you see in the the activity of the fingers you can see in the back to side prehension is uh, there is uh, uh, the thumb which is more adducted and less rotated and also slight flexion of the distal phalanx of the thumb is required and for um, the other side uh, they use the side of the index finger so these are the requirements for the pad to side prehension and what are the muscles which are more useful for this activity if you mention these two things that is enough okay for pad to side prehension in the next session we are going to discuss about the functional position of the wrist and hand thank you